In this video, I'm going to continue our discussion on how to toggle the camera from an Android app, acquire an image, show the image to a user in a composable view, store the image to the device, and then synchronize the image to Firebase Cloud Storage. So we know there's a lot we need to do in this video series, and we're going to take things in kind of a funny order. So let's review what we've done and what we need to do in this video. We've already handled permissions in a previous video. We have created a file provider in a previous video. We have created an intent to trigger the camera and handle the return and then show that image in an async in image component in a prior video. In this video, we're going to focus on setting up Firebase Cloud Storage, uploading the image to Firebase Cloud Storage, and then also updating a photo record in our Firebase database with the location of the image in Firebase Cloud Storage. So, fun video, let's jump right in. When I navigate to our Firebase console, we see Firebase Firestore Database, which we know simply holds JSON documents. We can't upload a binary file to there. However, we can to Firebase Storage, and we see right now there's nothing there, but we'll start populating this with the photos from our camera. Click on the Rules tab because there's one change we need to make out of the box to make this work. Let's say Allow Read Write If True. We will get more sophisticated on this, or at least we can get more sophisticated on this, by making user-specific directories, and then we can lock them down to specific users. I'll leave that as a future exercise. For now, just change false to true. Let's start with the necessary dependency in our build.gradle at the app module. And because we already have our implementation platform up here, we simply need to put in com Google Firebase, Firebase Storage KTX. We don't need to attach a version. And sync. In the Lambda where we hear back from the camera, we're going to want to capture a bit of metadata about the photo. This will be easiest to do with a photo data class. So go to my DTO package, right click Kotlin class file, and we'll make one simply called photo. Make it a data class. And you see so far I've given it a local URI which represents where it is stored on the local device and then a remote URI which indicates where it is stored in Firebase Cloud Storage. So that's the type of metadata I'm talking about. I'll also give it a description, date taken, and ID. And you'll notice that I've given each of these default values, so we can call this constructor with nothing if we want, or we can call it with any combination of the parameters that you see here. Back to main activity, and remember where we are. This is the register for activity result, and the open and close curly that I'm highlighting here is a lambda function that will be invoked when we hear back from the camera. So let's focus on on success, and we can populate at least one of our parameters of that photo data class we just created. And import photo. It's likely that we'll have multiple photos for a single specimen. So let's consider where we want to store those. Typically anything that's state data we want to put in the view model. So let's make some kind of collection on the view model that will hold our photos. There is no attribute called photos yet, so you notice it's going to give me a red line. Let's go ahead and create member property. And you see it doesn't know what type this should be. Let's make it of type array list with photo as a generic identifier. And let's go ahead and initialize it while we're here. One consideration I'm not going to tackle just yet, but notice that we're adding a photo every time we click the camera button. If we switch specimens, we'll want to clear out that photo collection, but that's a whole other conversation. Let's worry about that when needed. A nice thing is that our save specimen function calls into the view model, and in the view model we are already storing the specimens, the user, and the collection of photos. So the balance of our work is going to be in the view model. We will need to coordinate all of this in a series of steps. First, we authenticate, and when we authenticate we get a user ID. Then we can save our specimen, and when we have success from that, we can take our specimen ID and we can create our photo record and we can upload our image to Firebase Cloud Storage. After we've uploaded the image to Firebase Cloud Storage, we will get a URI that represents where that photo lives. And so then we can use that to update our metadata for the photo back in Firebase Database so that the two are essentially linked together. Let's start in the save specimen function in our view model, and let's give ourselves a bit of space in the handle add on success listener, which means that we were able to save the specimen. 
Remember that Photos is a collection on the main view model where our activity is storing data about the images that are acquired from the camera. So I'm saying if Photos is not empty, which means if we have at least one photo, let's do this next step. Upload Photos. We do not yet have this function, so I'll create it. Now inside of this, I'm going to iterate over each of our photos. Next, let's capture a URI that represents where the photo was stored locally on our device. Tell you what, to make this a bit more descriptive, let's rename the it variable the photo with the simple photo and then arrow. And URI will import. And you remember that photo local URI is something that we said when we heard back from the camera in our main activity. We're going to use this to help us to store the image on Firebase Cloud Storage. First, though, we need something called a storage reference. We'll come right back here to line 100 in just a moment, but for now, let's go up towards the top and make our storage reference. So, similar to the Firebase Firestore variable that we created to save items to our database, now the storage reference allows us to upload items to Firebase Storage. Now let's start by indicating a specific place within Firebase Storage where we want to store the image. So you notice I did a little trickiness here. I started at a root directory of images. Then I get the user ID, and then I get the last path segment or the file name of the image that we're saving. Reason being, the user UID will allow me to set some rules around that, some authentication and authorization rules around it. And then the URI last path segment is essentially the file name, which is going to make this a unique place to store our image. Now, I am a little nervous about this null call here, so I probably want to wrap this in a let to make sure that the user is not null, or I want to enforce it on the activity side and make sure that the user is not null before saving. I'm not currently doing that, so I realize that's a little bit of technical debt that I'll need to go back and clean up at a later time. Next, let's try to upload the image to that location. So we're taking the URI of the image where it's stored locally, and we're using that to invoke put file, which is going to put it here on Firebase Cloud Storage. Next, we can find out whether or not we're successful. So you can see in the failure call we're logging, which is always a good idea. Probably we should go ahead and log in the success listener as well. After that, we can get the download URL, which is the remote URL where this image is stored. And that again, we can attach an on success listener. Within that, notice that the IT variable is the remote URI. We can rename it that way if we want. And then we can assign it into our photo data class. And finally, with all this information, we can update the record in Firebase Database or Firebase Cloud Firestore. Since we're already iterating over our photos here, we can simply do this update photo database one at a time within the iteration loop. I've not yet created that function. Let's go ahead and let the IDE do a bit of work for us. We know that Firebase Cloud Firestore will store an alternating set of collections, documents, collections, documents. And so there's some logic we can borrow that we already have created. Where we are saving the specimen, we have an update where we walk from users to a specific user to specimens to a specific specimen. Let's go ahead and grab that because we're simply going to want to add our photo underneath that collection. It doesn't like the nullness here on users, so I'm going to go ahead and wrap this one in a let. And since IT is the iteration variable, we'll change that to IET.UID, and you notice the red line goes away because it's only going to invoke this let if user is indeed not null. So we start with users, then the user ID, then specimens, then the specimen ID. Let's add a collection after this. We'll call that photos. We'll save all that in a collection variable. And then we can add our current photo to that collection. Now we'll get a handle back from adding that photo and we can add a success listener and a failure listener. The failure is the easiest one to do because we just need to put an exception message there in a simple log statement with a message. Let's go ahead and add an informational log in the handle add on success listener. Now within that we can get a couple of other items because note that the iteration variable here is a document reference. We get the photo ID, so we can update the photo ID, just like so. Now this is kind of weird because we have just created this photo record. We've received the ID, but 
For my own use, it's kind of nice to store that ID in the photo DTO as well. So I'm going to write a quick line here to update that photo one more time. I'll borrow the same line above where we walk all the way from users down the photos. And I'm simply going to say document and then pass in the photo ID and then say set and then pass in the photo object again. That's simply going to go right back to Firebase, give it the ID right back, but that's going to be really handy when I'm back in the activity in case I need to update an existing photo. Gosh, one consequence of this now is I have a lambda within a lambda, and both of them have a variable called IT. So you see up above, IT is equal to user, where down below, IT is document reference. When that's the case, the most specific one applies. This is where it's a really good idea to give that IT variable a new name. So let's say user and then arrow, and then I'm simply going to replace IT in the line above with user, and a few other locations where I'm going to need to do that. I've started the emulator, and we know we need to be a logged in user, so I went ahead and clicked log on, and I'm going to sign on. Now I'll pick a specimen. We'll choose the Westerland Rose. Let's take a photo. We see it's creating the image on our file system. I'll go ahead and tell it to play through. Camera renders now, and I'll give it a bit of a new perspective and take a photo. We see that image appears on our application. And when we choose Save, I've snapped a few breakpoints so that we can watch what happens. So first of all, we navigate to the Save Specimen function on our main view model. And now we're saying, is the photo collection empty or not empty? If it's not empty, let's continue to upload photos. In Upload Photos, we're iterating over each of those photos, getting that local URI. We're creating the storage reference on Firebase Cloud Storage. We're uploading the image, and then we're waiting to hear back from the image. We have a success and a failure listener, so I'll go ahead and choose F9. Now, there are actually two images here because I was running a demo of this when I paused the recording, so you will see two images, even though on the recording you just saw one. But nonetheless, the logic is the same. And we see that, sure enough, we get to the add on success listener, which means that these photos were successfully saved. And now we go to the update photo database function, which is where we're saying, okay, we'll create a record for this photo inside of the Firebase Cloud Firestore or Firebase database, if you will. So let's go ahead and tell that to continue and let's see what our results are. If we go to storage, we now see there's an images folder, and then we have YLIFU. Let's take a look at authentication, and we'll see that matches my user record. Back to storage, images, YLFIU, and we see that we have two images that are here. I can click on the image, and hopefully it will look a little bit familiar. At least one of these will, so we see the couch with the decoration in the background and the window. If I go to the Firestore database, we can go to users and then choose that YLIFU user, then go to specimens. Now from specimens, let's find the Westerland Rose. There we go. And notice now we have a new collection called Photos. And what do we have under Photos? Well, we have two records that have the metadata of the photo, including the remote URI, or in other words, the URI where we can access the photo directly on Firebase Storage. So in this video, we've seen how to upload an image in Firebase Cloud Storage and link it to Firebase Cloud Firestore or Firebase Database if you prefer. We know it's a multi-step process where we want to authenticate using Firebase Auth. Then we save our specimen. Once we save our specimen, we upload the photos. Once we upload the photo, we go back and create a photo metadata record, which links all of this together. The specimen in our Firebase database or Firebase Cloud Firestore and the image in Firebase Cloud Storage. We also know that we are expanding our collections and documents that alternate. We started with users. From users, we went to specimen. And now from specimen, we're going to photos. So as always, I hope this video was helpful and I look forward to reading your comments. Thank you.